Ahoy everyone, this is David Eugene Perry with our continuing series of interviews with colleagues around the world talking about how we get from the great pause of 2020 into the hope for great recovery of 2021. And I'm delighted to have in the Zoom room now someone from right here in the Bay Area, Matt Lefford, Executive Director of London, Jack London Park Partners. Matt, welcome. Thank you, David. Nice to be here with you. So how long have you been in this position at Jack London Park Partners? Well, David, I started about a year ago and uh, it, with um, the idea that uh, I was joining in a much different time <laughs> and obviously was not the year that I had expected or any of us for that matter. So I, I came, at, I think I started here uh, February of 2020. So uh, right before the COVID wave crested over all of us. That's correct. Uh, I, I think my predecessor knew something. I, I saw her um, months later and she, uh, she gave me a look that uh, she had this sort of knowing look that she sort of got out while the getting was good. <laughs> Got it. So tell me what the last year has been like and what is the mission of Jack London Park Partners? So in about um, 2012, California State Parks went, bit, went through a bit of a financial crisis and there were several state parks that were slated for closure. Uh, among them was Jack London State Historic Park in Glen Ellen. And they had a, um, a, a local nonprofit association, um, mostly of volunteers that were helping to support the park. Uh, a group of community members came together and used the nonprofit as a basis to come in and to save the park and to operate the park on behalf of state parks. And so there was um, sort of make a long story short, there was some enabling legislation that allowed for nonprofit groups to take over um, the operation of a few uh, state parks. And there are a couple here in the Bay Area, like Jack London, uh, China Camp is in China, China Camp State Park is another example of that. And so we as a nonprofit in partnership with the state park run the day-to-day -day operations here at Jack London. And so how big uh, an area is this state park? It's about 1,600 acres. And we've got, um, we've got an, extension, uh, an extensive trail network um, close to 25 to 29 uh, miles of trails in the back country. And of course, we've got the historic ranch area the Wolf House ruins and, um, and a, a, a newly renovated museum here at the House of Happy Walls. My office is here in the basement and, and the, the museum was renovated by Jack Lennon Park Partners 2017 and 2018 and reopened in the fall of 2018. So in the era of COVID, when we're all looking for ways still to get out into the great outdoors, did, did you actually see an increase in people coming on the hiking trails and using the park? Great question. We did. So initially, um, you know, a year ago, March, we had to close our gates to the public. And it was at a time when we were all learning more about how the disease was transmitted and, uh, and I think that it was um, discovered that um, activities outdoors were much less of a risk and certainly in, in wide open areas like the, the, um, the opportunity that this park provides that we could actually safely accommodate visitors. And uh, shortly after we reopened just we had a huge surge of new attendance. All of our indoor facilities were closed. We had to close picnic areas and of course, all group activities um, uh, were suspended, but we were seeing more and more folks come and visit the park. This park's always been a really popular place, especially with locals, 
people who know it well really enjoy getting out in the back country. There's some um, wonderful views you can catch up on the ridge of Sonoma Mountain, and there's just um, uh, a number of different kind of habitats and this mixed forest types here. So it's a really a great place and, and you can do a really um, challenging hike or you can do a nice little stroll through Beauty Ranch. So over the summer, we were seeing those numbers um, greatly increase uh, until our sort of, unfortunately now what we're all calling fire season started and, and we had a really early one this August with um, those fires that were triggered by a lightning storm. And then of course the glass fire um, that started late September and went into early October. So those were periods where we didn't have a lot of visitation and we actually had to close in October because of the glass fires proximity to the park. Talk to me about the founding of the park and what is its connection to the life and literature and, and legacy of uh... Of, of him, of Jack Lump. Great question. So this was really Beauty Ranch was um, was sort of Jack London's dream, and this was his home. And he he um, moved here in, in the early part of the 20th century, and he, he unfortunately passed away in in 1916. But he he really uh, imagined. Um, an innovative ranch and farm uh, here in Glen Ellen. And he experimented with lots of really wonderful things. And he was, he was just really captivated by the beauty and, and magic of this place. And so there are historic elements of the ranch that Jack London kept. Um, his cottage where he was writing a thousand words a day and did, um, he was of course a very prolific writer. And so, um, the museum that is uh, a tribute to Jack London was actually Charmian London's home that she built after his death. And um, she really wanted the home to be a living legacy of both Jack's and, and her life here. And so that's what it is today. And it's sort of, we tell the story, kind of three different stories really the, the story of Jack London, the adventurer and sort of, and the story of Jack London, the writer. And then this really interesting thing about Jack and Charmy and the couple and, and their lives here at, at Beauty Ranch. So there's lots of really interesting things to discover about the London legacy here. Right. In, in the last couple of uh, weeks, there've been a, a few articles about the, the legacy of Jack London and the period in which he lived. And, was he reflective of values that nowadays might be considered somewhat off? Uh, there's been several conversations about that. How does one put the legacy of someone from another century into the time period and the politics of now? David, that's a, that's a great question. I, you know, something that I really have thought a lot about and we have thought about, it's, it's, I think it's challenging to try to contextualize a life in the early part of the century, but certainly Jack Lennon was a complicated guy. And, you know, in, in some ways he was really progressive and in other ways um, he wrote and, and behaved in ways that were probably not even acceptable then by many standards and certainly not now. And, and I think the way that we sort of look, we're looking at it here at the museum it is a jumping off point for talking about um, race and, and equity. And, and certainly we, you know, we are a park that is a, about much more than just a, a particular figure. But I think in the way that it can serve as a learning moment, uh, I, I think that we are listening and open for discussion and engaging in, in dialogue about it. It's a really, you know, I think we have all experienced a year of, of upheaval and, it, and, and I think it's a time to really embrace difficult topics. And, and I think that's, that's really possible. And, and Jacqueline is certainly a figure that can be a jumping off point 
because he was so complicated in his, in, in his views. Well, and of course, as a writer myself, I know that writing is a complex business and uh, reevaluating the life and legacy of writers is an ongoing process and one that any serious museum takes on. So I, I appreciate that. In, in closing, what would you like people to know about the park itself and how they can access it? I mean, for instance, I, I'm sure there were a lot of people that this year said, oh, well, maybe I would go out of the United States for a vacation, but this year they're going to stay home. And in California, that means exploring the great outdoors. What would you like people to know about the park itself and how they can access it this summer? Well, we're open seven days a week and, um, and year round. And this park is, is, is really magical in a lot of ways. There's a vineyard here, there's historic ranch, there's a, an historic ranch, a beautiful museum to really um, discover the writings of, of Jack London. And there's so much to do here. You could come here seven days a week and not do the same thing twice. And so I would encourage you to come up here and um, experience the joys of hiking in the back country and, um, and find time to picnic and pick up a, a wonderful bottle of wine. We're here in wine country and there are so many great places to visit and eat and we're the perfect place to stop and pause and find a reflective moment. Great, well, I look forward to seeing you in the museum and on the trails sometime soon. We've been speaking with Matt Lefford from the Jack London Park Partners. Thanks for speaking with us and have a wonderful spring and summer, Matt. David, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Ahoy. Thank you.